Hello and welcome to my video tutorial of how to create a custom blade in Photoshop. We're going to start out by opening up a new document, make it 50 by 5 inches, 200 pixels per inch. Once you got that open, you're going to create another document, 12 by 1.375 inches, also 200 pixels per inch. Fill that with black paint from the paint bucket tool, copy and paste over to the first document, and move it over to the side. Now open up another one, 36 by 1.5 inches, 200 pixels per inch, fill with black, copy and paste over. The first one that we copy and paste over is going to represent the handle, and the second one is going to represent the blade. Now once you got that done, save it. Then select the second one, the one that's going to represent the blade, with the elliptical marquee. And make sure the top part of the selection lines up with the top part of the rectangle and the edge lines up with the approximate center of the edge of the rectangle. Now you're going to do a select inverse and use the eraser tool to delete that portion. Nothing in the back or on the other side, just the front part. And then once you got that done, create another elliptical marquee along the length and delete that. Now create a rectangular marquee and delete the bottom portion. And you're just going to copy and paste and flip vertical and put those together. Now you're going to create a new document one by one inch again 200 pixels per inch going back to the handle here. Create a circle transform the circle so it's about 50 percent of its original height and copy and paste that over make four copies of it then select the layer and move down to the rectangle and delete it. Then you're going to move that further over so that you can use it as a two-handed sword. Delete that. Now create another elliptical marquee and delete that. It's mainly just for decoration purposes, but what the hell. Now make another elliptical marquee along the bottom side. Delete. Move over and delete in about the same place in reference to the finger grooves. Now create another one and select inverse and erase that part and make sure you line it up otherwise it's going to look messed up and do the same thing for the other one another elliptical marquee inverse and delete to round off the back edge now you're going to do two big one and a small one and select inverse and do an erase to create that another and delete makes it kind of a fancy handle okay since we're done with that for now we're going to go back to the blade Select the top half of the blade, not the bottom, then go into the gradients menu and create yourself a gradient. Doesn't really matter if you use grays like I got here or if you use black and white. We're going to mess around with the contrast in a little bit, so just go ahead and use whatever. Then make a copy of that selection and do a gradient in the opposite direction and flip vertical and line that up so it's like that. Okay, now for the contrast. Take the bottom half way down. Same with the top, but make sure that the bottom half is darker than the top half. Now you're going to select the top half and fill it with white after you've moved the selection down. Then notch it down a little bit further and delete. This will leave a strip of white along the top of edge of the blade. Now you're going to want to blur that and then select the top half again. Fill with white on a separate layer. Blur it and delete the outer edge. This will leave a, a central highlight. Now, create another layer and do black along the bottom part, which would be the, the center of the blade. And blur that and mess around with its opacity until it looks something like that. Then merge all those the highlights and the shadows together, and then copy, paste, flip vertical, and just put that over the bottom half. You may have to do it as a, a lighten layer or overlay or something like that, just until it looks something like that. Now, we're going to use the black base layer to create a dissolve layer and just make everything else invisible, copy merge visible, and paste over top of that and delete the dissolve layer. And once you have that in place, do a motion blur vertically and select everything on the outside and delete. And you'll have to take down the opacity. This will give it a brushed steel type look. Since we're finished with the blade for now, we're going to go back to the handle. You're going to do the same thing that you did for the blade. Select the handle and on a separate layer, fill it with white and nudge it down. And then nudge it down a little bit further and delete. 
This will leave a white strip along the edge, just like with the blade. And do the same for the bottom half. Now select the handle again, and on a separate layer, fill with white. Then select inverse, nudge down first for the top, and delete, and then for the bottom. This will leave a central highlight. Then, once you've selected the, the handle layer again, you're going to blur. Start with the top strip, then the bottom, and then the center. Then you're going to want to take the opacity way down. Then select the base layer again, and on a separate layer, fill with white. Delete the edges, and take the opacity down. You may also have to blur. Now, we're going to create the, the final document, which will represent the handle guard. Make it 0 0.4375 inches by 3.5 inches. Then fill it with black. Copy and paste over. Move it over so it's in line with the, the handle, and you also have to move the blade over. Now, go to gradients, and we're going to adjust the gradient that we used for the blade a little bit. Move either side closer to the other. Fill it like that. Blur the edges. Don't ha have to blur the, uh, the top and bottom, just the left and right. And then darken it up near the bottom. Okay, now we're pretty much done with the blade. And you don't want to add too much color to it, but if you just leave it the way it is, it's basically black and white. So what you want to do is select the blade, and on a separate layer, do Filter, Render, Clouds, and have your color set as Cyan and Red. In case you don't know what that is, it would be 0, 255, 255 for Cyan, and 255, 0, 0 for Red. Now to give it a translucent effect, what we're going to want to do is create on a separate layer a rectangular marquee and fill it with cyan and then you can just select the other half and fill it with red or if you want to do it faster just select and then invert it so it's red the opposite color and then once you've done that go to image adjustments hue saturation and adjust it over plus 30 degrees this will change the color slightly, but they'll still be opposite colors. And keep doing that until you come all the way around back to red and cyan again, doing difference clouds with those colors on the layer that we just did the, the clouds on. And what you'll have is multicolor difference clouds once you're finished with that process. Now select the bottom half of the blade and reduce the opacity of the difference clouds because the bottom half is going to be darker and you don't want it to be more saturated then convert the layer with the color difference clouds into a color layer and reduce its opacity. You're not going to want it really high, just way down so you can barely tell that it has any color. Now that we've done that, we're going to go back to the handle guard and do the same thing. Select filter clouds with red and cyan and then use the same process as before to determine what colors you need for the difference clouds going all the way around the spectrum. Then reduce, you can just use a, a no hardness eraser, it'll have to be pretty big, and reduce it that way near the bottom where it's going to be darker, and turn it into a color layer and reduce its opacity. So it looks pretty much like the blade does. Finally, we're going to go to the handle. We don't need to give it the same multicolored effect as the handle guard and the blade. Just going to select it on a separate layer, fill with whatever color you want it to be. I'm going to do blue for this one and then take its opacity down so you can just barely tell that it's blue, low saturation blue. Now we're almost done but I think that the sword would look a little better if we added a decoration to the end of the handle. So I'm gonna do a selection and the same gradient that I used for the handle guard and the same process to make it look three-dimensional and do a copy of that and warp to give it a rounded effect and put that behind and merge. And there you have it. That's it. One custom sword designed from scratch in Photoshop. Not that hard to do. Just takes a little bit of time and the right technique. I hope this guide has been helpful. And if not, just leave a comment and tell me what you think of it. I'm not a teacher, so <laughs> whatever. I'll be doing more advanced sword designs in the future. So if you're interested, then keep your eyes open. But for now, goodbye, and have a nice day.